Okay, we just got done talking about the y equals mx plus b equation, uh, which in my last example is y equals negative 2x plus 12. It was a negative correlation. Uh, I never calculated the correlation coefficient. I would have to uh, put that into that website that I gave you. But that's the general uh, linear equation, or um, we're calling it now the least square regression line. But we're going to change it into statistical language instead. And we call this y hat, hat like a hat on your head, y hat. And we switch these two around. So it's y hat equals 12 minus 2 x hat, <coughs> where y hat and x hat are the predicted x and y values. Because remember, this wasn't the actual line. It was a estimation of the line that would go through those dots. Okay, so back to this. If you had a computer generator, that would put all these lines, all these dots onto the line, um, it would form a line that would be the y equals mx plus b. But since we just drew what was the best fit line, it's just predicting what the um, uh, predicted x and y values would be in this problem, okay? Whatever the problem is. And so that's why we indicate it with y hat and x hat. Those are the predicted. Now we've got something that's called the residual. And I'm going to draw another picture here. Since we're using this least square regression equation um, and this line of best fit to predict stuff that's not on the line, if it's right on the line, you know what it is. But if it's off the line, you're predicting these values and, and uh, using this line to make a prediction, which goes into the last part of statistics, which is using the data you have to make a prediction or an inference about the population. So if, first of all, if the prediction you're making is outside of the graph, like outside of the data that you have, outside of the data is called um, extrapolation. Because it's extra or outside, or exit, think of that. The prefix X always means um, outside, like exit or extra. <clears throat> so it's outside of the graph we're talking about, like not in that set of data. It's like way higher or way lower. But if it's interpolation, then it's inside of the graph. So back to this, interpolation is inside, extrapolation is outside. So back to this graph, the, an example of extrapolation doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it would be something like down here or up here, which is down into the negative. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense in this problem. But any of the data in this graph would be interpolation. Okay, if I had a positive correlation and my dot, dots went like this, then any of the data between this right here and this right here would be interpolation. But if I wanted to use it to make a prediction of something way up here, that would be extrapolation. Okay, now I just had to add that. Now the residual, <clears throat> I was going to say that and then I added a new thought, but the residual is the difference between the observed and the predicted. So it's the observed minus the predicted. Okay, so let me explain what I mean here. Um, <clears throat> and the residual is the uh, <coughs> the residual would be something like I'm going to draw this equation. Y hat equals seventy two point eighty six plus point five eight x. There's my equation x hat. Remember that the y hat and x hat are the predicted, okay? Where y is y is the weight and x is the age. Of a baby, uh, I don't know. I don't know what kind of animal, but let's just say, I don't know. Let's just say a baby bear. I could be wrong on the whites here, but I just made this up, just so you know. <laughs> um, so there's my equation. And 
if I say, what is the residual for a baby that weighs 68 pounds at six months? What is the residual? For a baby that weighs um, 68 pounds at six months, might be a baby elephant, I don't know. Then you have to take your Y hat and your Y and your X hat and your X because your Y hat is my observed. I mean, my Y is my observed. My Y hat is my predicted. Okay, so my Y hat is going to be 68 pounds. Okay, Y hat. I mean, sorry, I'm getting this mixed up. My Y is 68 because that's actually what it is. That's actually what it is, is 68. And six months is my X. When I put that into the equation, though, when I put 6 into here, 0. 0.58 times 6, 0. 0.58 times 6, plus 72.8, 0. 0.86, I end up with 76.34. So based on the fact, the observed fact, that the baby was 68 pounds at six months. When I put a six in here for the time and, and calculate it out, it's not 68, it's 76.34. So the actual is 68, but the predicted from our equation is 76.34. So that means that the residual is the difference between those. And I'll explain what the residual means here on a graph. The residual is 8.34 residual. Okay, here's what that means. <clears throat> Let me draw a graph. Okay, here's my graph. Here's the weights of the bear and their age. Here's my line of best fit. And I have given this or calculated this equation to be 72.86 plus 0.58x. Okay, that's the equation of that line I just drew. Now, what the residual is doing is measuring the difference between this, the actual, and what's on the line, which is the predicted. And you do that by measuring these vertical distances. So if you think about what's actually happening here, if you had a line, vertical line here, that was exactly the same length on the top as it is on the bottom, they would cancel each other and go to the line. It's like this one and this one cancel and go to the line. This one and this will cancel and go to the line. What's left over at the end of things that don't cancel out is the difference between what you predicted it to be on that line and what they actually were off the line. Okay? These distances are the residuals. So if we were to just say that that one and that one could cancel each other out, the ones I scribbled out, and let's say that this one and this one can cancel each other out, and uh, maybe this one and this one could cancel each other out, we still end up with more that are higher. Still end up with more that are higher because that is not big enough well, though, even if we said that those two canceled out, even if they were equal and those two canceled out, we still end up with more that are higher, which means that our predicted value is going to be higher than the observed. And it was. We had a positive residual. Our predicted value was 68 or 76, and the bear only actually weighed 68. So that's just sort of what we're talking about when we're talking about this residual idea. Okay, I'm trying to break it down so that it's on, um, more like in language you can understand. Um, I mean, this is just sort of the intuitive idea of what's happening here. There's there's a lot I 
big nasty calculations that are going on if you plug these numbers into a residual calculator. But this is the idea, and this is what I'll expect you to be able to calculate. Okay, so if you end up with a um, something above the line, it shouldn't be a surprise to you that. Uh, well, actually, I calculated, I subtracted that wrong because it should have been negative three point eight four. I already erased it, but it was I. It was the observed minus the predicted, so it was the sixty eight minus the um, seventy six. And I forgot to write the negative there. Um, it's important though. So if you end up with a negative um, residual, it means that the extra was above the line, just like I had just drawn with the weights and the bears and the little ones all canceled off and you ended up with two of them above the line. But if you end up with a positive residual, then that means that the extra was below the line. Okay, hopefully that make, made sense. So if I were to just intuitively draw another one, draw my line, calculate my um, y minus y over x minus x, turn it into my y hat. You know, I'm going to take two, two points on the line, use my y minus y equals m times x minus x. I calculate that. Let's just pretend I'm making up numbers here. Let's pretend I ended up with y equals negative um, negative 0.5x plus 30. Let's say that was the equation. I would turn that into y hat equals 30 minus 0.5x hat. <clears throat> and let's say that um, my observed... is uh, let's say my observed is uh, just a second we're gonna cancel these out and come up with our intuitive difference here draw my residuals okay see what we can kind of cancel out here I'll just cancel a top and a bottom. <clears throat> cancel, 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 cancel. Um, I would say maybe that one and that one together add up to that one. So I end up with two little ones below the line. Okay, two little ones below the line to me would say that we end up with a, a positive. Um, we should end up with a positive. Residual. Okay, so <clears throat> if my observed is uh, 20 pounds at six months, 20 pounds at six months, then 30 minus 0.5 times six. 30 minus 0.5 times 6. Which is 0.5 times 6 is 3. 30 minus 3 is 27. Y hat is 27. And the observed was 20. So I have 20 minus 27. 20 minus 27 is um, negative 7. I end up with a negative. Uh, I end up with a negative residual. Um, but that's because I just literally made these numbers up without thinking about it. So that wasn't a very good example. Uh, what I really wanted to do is to show you how to calculate residual, right? <laughs> I should have made up the problem um, beforehand. But if you end up with a negative, plus I just intuitively drew this and was not measuring or anything, so I just uh, I should have made it so that there was more numbers above. But anyway, uh, that's okay. The residual is negative seven, and that's what I want you to. There's, that's what I want you to understand is how to calculate the observed minus the predicted, and how to draw these residuals. 
But again, if these are, this is an actual problem and not one that your dorky math teacher just made up off the top of your head, this is how it should turn out. Okay. All right. So I think that is it. No, there's one other thing I wanted to briefly talk about, and I've actually already mentioned it, and that is uh, um, what's called an R value. And we've already talked about that too, the residual. If you flip around your X and your Y, like I've talked about, that you should be able to do, it's not going to affect the correlation coefficient. It's just going to, the, the or the residual. It's just going to stay the same because there's still going to be those same differences, those same little little lines. So um, that those are called linear transformations. If I shift the whole graph over, if I shift the whole graph up, if I flip the variables, nothing is going to change that. It's all just going to be the same. So nothing really changes the um, R value in a linear transformation. And that just means changing the placement of the line. So that's, that's pretty easy to understand when you read about it too. So, all right, we are done with that unit and you only have one unit left and that is dealing with your big project.